Churches around the world use MainStage week in and week out for their keyboard sounds. It's a powerful tool, but if you're not careful, you can make pivotal mistakes that could lead to catastrophic failure, either during your preparation or, heaven forbid, during your live performances. In this video, I wanna walk through some of the most common mistakes we see people new to MainStage making. You might be making some of these mistakes right now and not even be aware. This video is gonna break it down, make it simple, and help you set up your rig for success. All right, we're gonna start off really simple. MainStage has some default settings inside of preferences that you might just think you don't need to adjust, but if these are set to the incorrect values, it can really put a lot of strain on your computer, making it more likely to lag or crash while you're on stage. First off, don't run your audio buffer size lower than you need it to be. This is located inside of advanced audio preferences in MainStage. But the buffer size is one of the most important factors that dictates how well your computer performs while you're using MainStage. To put it simply, the buffer size determines how long you give MainStage to think and process before outputting the audio. So you play keys, MainStage thinks for that buffer time, that buffer size, and then it outputs the audio. So the longer the buffer size is, the more time you're giving your computer to process, which makes it more reliable. It reduces the strain on your machine. You don't wanna give MainStage all the time in the world, otherwise you're gonna feel the difference, right? There's gonna be a delay, which is called latency inside of MainStage between playing notes and hearing them. So there is a balance here, but we see a lot of churches that think, oh, latency is bad, so I'm gonna run my buffer as low as possible, like 32 or 64. If you're not careful, that's gonna really put your computer under a lot of unnecessary strain. So we find that buffer values of 128 to 256, if you're on an older machine, maybe 512 is the way to go. Don't run your buffer size any lower than you need to. The next mistake to avoid is like the first, running a sample rate that is unnecessarily high. This goes right alongside of your buffer size and just determines the overall audio quality of the signal that MainStage outputs. You have several options inside of MainStage audio preferences. Those can change based on the audio interface that you may have connected. Now you might think, I should go for the highest sample rate because that's gonna be the highest quality audio. And if you were recording music in the studio, that'd probably be true. But for live performances, you really do not need a high sample rate at all. We actually recommend 44.1 or 48 and no higher. The reason, the human ear just cannot tell the difference between those low sample rates and higher ones in a full band mix the ear just isn't that well tuned. So there's no reason to put extra strain on your machine with a sample rate any higher than those values. One more mistake while we're inside of MainStage preferences. MainStage has a feature called autosave. It's on by default, so if you've downloaded MainStage from the App Store and you've never opened preferences, I guarantee autosave is doing something. Autosave basically just means at a certain interval of time, MainStage is going to save your work. It sounds like a good thing. If your computer crashed and an autosave had backed up your work, that would maybe be a good thing. But here's the problem. If you're on stage performing and main stage decides now's the time to autosave, your computer is going to be doing two things at once. Trying to output all the audio, keep up with everything you're asking it to do, and backing up that entire concert, saving it in the moment. That's not the right time for your concert to be saved. You do not want to split your resources. Autosave can cause all sorts of performance issues, and if you're manipulating controls while the concert is autosaved, you might actually have some values take over that are undesirable. So we firmly recommend that you turn autosave off entirely and instead just get in a good habit of hitting Command S to save anytime you make changes that you don't wanna lose. This is gonna drastically improve performance and make your rig more reliable on stage. Next up, we see folks spend too much time in layout mode trying to line things up perfectly by clicking and dragging them one little step at a time. Layout mode is where you can customize the workspace in MainStage. It's a powerful feature that lots of folks love because you can make it look like whatever you need it to. You can color code, add all the controls you need, but of course you want that to look good. You want it to be organized, simple, and non-threatening, especially if you're setting it up for volunteers. But you don't have to spend tons of time clicking and dragging to try and line things up. Instead, you can click on multiple controls in layout mode at the same time, then right click and use the align or distribute tools to automatically spread them out, make everything look pretty, in the workspace. You don't have to do that manually. It's gonna be really, really frustrating if you try. 
All right, for this next mistake, let's imagine that you're brand new to main stage. You create your own concert, you customize it. For the first set list that you play, you have four patches. So you put those in your patch list, it goes great, you're excited. You start setting up for the next week, you just open that same concert, you add four more patches. The next week, four more patches. The next week, four more patches. By Easter, you've got 80 patches in there and your concert is absolutely super sized. It might seem like the simplest way to have everything available to you so you can just grab the stuff that you need, but this is not how Mainstage is designed to work for a couple of reasons. There's better ways to organize all the patches and sounds. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Mainstage is designed to allow you to seamlessly select any patch in your patch list at any moment. The more patches you have in your patch list, the harder main stage is working to make that seamless switching possible. So every patch in your concert is actually taking up resources of some sort at all times. Rather than having one mega concert with all of your potential sounds you could ever need, create duplicates of your master concert and only load in the patches you need for a given performance. Then next week, start fresh with a new copy, load in those patches, Repeat. It's going to reduce processor strain and it's going to help you stay more organized. This next one's kind of sneaky and it's specific to some MIDI controllers, not all, so it may or may not apply to you. When you load up one of the default concerts in main stage, it's going to listen for any incoming MIDI data and it's going to do stuff with it. So you plug in your keyboard, you load up one of those concerts and it just works. This is great if you're just getting started, but here's where it gets a little sneaky. If your keyboard is sending more MIDI data than it needs to, most of the time this looks like sending duplicate data on MIDI channel one, two, three, four, all the way up to 16. You can actually be adding a bunch of strain to main stage by sending 16 duplicates of the exact same data into your main stage concert. If you have a simple concert, you may not even notice this is happening. Again, you plug it in, it just works, you think you're good to go. But once you start triggering more instruments, layering sounds together, or working with more complex workspaces, you might start to notice some sluggishness. This is a really tricky thing to identify. The only way you'd really know if this is happening to you is to use Mainstage's MIDI monitor. Play some notes, move some controls, and see what the MIDI data looks like. If you see data on more than one MIDI channel and they look like duplicates, then you need to check the user manual for your keyboard and figure out how to limit that down so Mainstage is only gonna listen and receive one MIDI channel's worth of data. Now this next one might sound obvious to you, but we see people make this mistake all the time. You might be playing the opening set of your service, it goes great, you're using main stage, you're touching the mouse, you're changing patches, then it's time for announcements, time for the sermon, whatever, you walk off stage and your computer goes to sleep or goes to screensaver. Then at the end of the service, you get back up there, you touch the trackpad to wake your computer back up and disaster strikes. This is because it's just not a good idea to allow your computer to sleep or even to go to screensaver while the connections between your audio hardware, your MIDI hardware are connected to main stage. So we recommend that you just turn off screensaver before you use main stage and they also designate that your computer is not allowed to go to sleep while main stage is connected. Now there's some stuff you can do if you really wanna get into the weeds to do that automatically via automator or you can just go into system preferences and tell your computer not to go to sleep when it's connected to power but we really recommend not letting it enter that state because we've gotten all sorts of horror stories and I've run into them myself of the computer sleeping and all of a sudden the MIDI controller is just not working anymore. The only way to fix it is to shut main stage down and open it back up. You really don't wanna be doing that during the altar call. This next mistake is a big time waster if you're not careful. Once you start getting comfortable inside a main stage, you might find yourself exploring the channel strips, getting into the audio effects, the MIDI effects, and the instrument plugins. There's all sorts of fun to be had there and you can dial in the sounds at a granular level to do exactly what you need them to do. Here's where people end up wasting a lot of time. All of the effects and plugins inside of main stage right at the top have a little drop down where you can save plugin presets. So if you find that you're commonly going to some of the same settings, maybe you have a favorite reverb setting, favorite go-to EQ for all the pads, and you're manually recreating that week in and week out, you're wasting tons of time. Just click on that drop down, choose save, name the preset, and then the next time you need that effect, recall it from the drop down and you're good to go. This is one of the biggest time-saving features in Mainstage, and it flies totally under the radar, especially if you find the channel strip interface sort of intimidating to begin with. This is a great way to do the work once, dial it in, and then enjoy the benefit of that great sounding preset long-term. 
When you have a concert that is your go-to or your sort of template concert for all of your preparation, make sure that you're making a backup copy of that concert. Don't just have one concert file and it's the only version on your machine because you might accidentally go into layout mode, select something in the workspace and tap the delete key and it's gone for good unless you realize that it's gone and undo that change in that moment. When main stage is open, just click file, choose save as and then name it, whatever is gonna help you remember it. Or if main stage isn't open, you can just locate your concert in Finder and literally copy and paste it into another folder or wherever. It's a really good idea to back up all that hard work that you've put into making main stage do what you need it to do so that you don't lose that effort due to a fluke accident. Okay, a couple minutes ago, we talked about not having one concert with all of your patches loaded in because it bogs down your computer, makes main stage work super hard. So what should you do with all of those great patches that you found or dialed in from scratch? Well, there's a couple places that you can put those patch files on your computer where main stage is actually gonna be able to recognize them in the inspector. The inspector is that little window at the bottom third of edit mode that changes based on what you've selected. When you have a patch selected in your patch list, you can actually view all of your user patches if you save them to the right folder destination. That's where you should save all of your custom patches. So anytime you've done work, you've set up your concert, church was a great success, you know that you'll need those patches sometime in the future, just export all of those patches. You can do that by clicking and dragging the patch out into the folder in a finder window, or you can just highlight a patch in your patch list and hit Command E which is the export shortcut. Then you can choose that folder. You can also do great things like create subfolders inside of that for particular types of sounds. You can organize by song. And if you want duplicates or if you want things to show up in multiple places, you can just go to Finder and create those copies wherever you'd like. The key is that you can actually find them again inside of MainStage itself by using the inspector. This last mistake is a huge one. You really, really need to avoid making it. Do not make changes to your system or update main stage before important services. I cannot tell you how many emails we've gotten from folks who will reach out to us two days before Easter and say, I just updated to the new version of main stage and everything is broken. And it's just really not a good idea to make changes to your rig before any environment where the stakes are gonna be higher than usual. And the other side of that is when you do make changes, updates to main stage or to your Mac OS, you really wanna back up everything on your machine before doing so. When you're gonna update main stage, you can go to your applications folder, right click on the main stage app itself and compress it. That creates a backup of the existing version on your machine. Then you can go ahead and update main stage from the app store, see what's new, make sure it didn't break anything for you. And if it didn't, you're good to go. But it's always a good idea to have that zipped backup of the earlier version. If something goes wrong, just unzip the backup. Both versions can live side by side on your computer without any issue and just use the old version until the bugs are worked out of the updated version of main stage. In the same way, we see so many folks who are not regularly backing up their machine in a general sense. They will write into us and say that their hard drive crashed and they lost everything and they are starting from scratch. Apple gives us a really simple tool to avoid this called Time Machine. It's an automatic tool that just allows you to connect an external hard drive or solid state drive to your computer and at regular intervals, it will create an entire backup of your machine. And it can do this on an ongoing basis. So if you accidentally ruin a concert, you can go to Time Machine and recall the previous version of that concert before it was ruined. Or if you update your entire computer and the OS breaks something about your audio interface or your MIDI hardware, you can actually restore a previous version of your entire machine and go back to that older OS. Time Machine is free, guys. It's not an extra expense. It's not an add-on. It's a built-in tool inside your Mac. You just have to have a storage device to store those backups to. It literally takes a couple minutes to set up. Just plug in the device, open Time Machine, and designate that you want to back up your computer to the drive. Then you have that peace of mind. Anytime you're working, just make sure that drive is plugged in. Time Machine is going to run in the background, and you know, even if your computer crashes, you're not gonna lose all that hard work. Now that I've shared some of what not to do in MainStage, I'd like to point you to our free MainStage Basics course. This is a multi-video series that you can access at no charge that walks through all the ingredients of a successful MainStage Worship Keys rig. If you'd like to check it out, just click the link in the description, enter your email address, and we'll send it to you right away so you can learn all you need to find success inside of MainStage. Thanks for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please share it with a worship leader or keys player you know, and be sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. 
That's a great way to support what we're doing here at Sunday Sounds. Thanks for watching. Thank you.